Because as soon as I turned 16, my mom, she was like, you're getting a car, you bought it yourself, now you got to pay your bills, you got to pay, if you want to go out, you got to put gas in your car, help me build my credit, it just like started young. What's up, Rasa? In this episode, I sit down with my good friend, Chris. Most of you might know him as 10th Gen. He is a local photographer who made a name for himself through the car scene by taking some dope-ass pictures of cars, people, businesses, everything you could think of. His edits are dope. His reels are dope. You really got to check him out. He talks about his upbringing, how he got started, his creative side, and we even went in depth as to uh, how he became the person he is today through faith, action, and we even put on our tinfoil hats, talked a little bit conspiracy, but he's a great guy. I had a lot of fun talking to him, getting to know the man behind the camera, and I think this is going to be a really good episode. Also, this sign right here, the sign, um, it was made by him. He recently started a business making custom signs made out of wood, LED lights in the back. Really cool, really sick. If you guys want to get one for yourself, please hit him up. He's doing that now. And uh, real estate photography. So if you got a home in the Corona area, he's your guy. Go work with him. Or uh, if you want to sign, hit him up. I'm pretty sure he can ship it out to you. But... Without further ado, here is 10th Gen. Tenth Gen. Yes, sir. Bienvenido, bro. Thank you. Thank you for coming through, G. Yes, sir. Glad, glad you had me here and appreciate the opportunity. The man, the myth, the legend. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, where you from? When somebody asks you that, like, well, what do you respond to, bro? I mean, Where are you from? Born and raised in Stockton, and then about my freshman year, moved to Lodi, went to Lodi High, mm -hmm. and then did independent study, uh, graduated from that, and stayed in Stockton for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then recently just moved to SoCal to Corona. Damn, bro, you traitor. Yeah, it's, it's a big move, man. But <laughs> you, you left Northern Cali, dog. Yeah, man. This, hey. this, this whole man, my allergies are bad, and. Just wanted like a fresh start, you know, and just yeah. get away from everything. What um so bro, you have um you're you're known. You're known for you you, you know how I know like like you uh you, you made a name for yourself? I see uh cars, mainly cars. Yeah. What with your decal. Ten yeah, gen blasted on the windshield, yeah, air fresheners. Like bro, people have like uh your 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 brand on them and i find that amazing because that's like almost like a tat tattoo mm -hmm. for their car you know yeah. like they're proudly representing bro everywhere they go like hey i fuck with this guy yeah so 10 10 gen 10 gen visuals how, like let's go back bro like and you came from um 209 lodi now you're in socal but going down memory lane bro like how'd you get started with um photography camera work cars all that man when'd so you first pick up the camera it was um it was actually my mom's camera mm -hmm. and she never used it so I told her like I want to just practice with it just try whatever I can do. So before I started with fixing shoes, mm -hmm. so I used to like restore them like Jordans. Them. Yeah. So I damn you get, had the money, bro. Man, offer up <laughs> or not not even offer up. At that time it was like Port City Soul. Yeah, and, Facebook groups. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah like, I remember that. I remember. I, they still they still active. Yeah, I still be on there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, like, everything is taxed right now, but it's like I just look for all the beaters for like forty dollars, mm -hmm. fifty dollars, just clean them. Like some of them weren't even bad, bro. Mm -hmm. And then I just resell them for like double or whatever they had to offer. You you just clean them up or you would do regluing and all yeah, that? Yeah, like, like re-glue, repaint, um, uncrease them. Damn, how'd you learn all that? Uh, retro Snickers. I don't know if oh, you the yeah. YouTuber. Yeah, 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 yeah. From the Bay Area, right? No, nah, he was from Texas. Yeah, uh, that's the that's the brown one. Yeah, like the Mexican. Sneakerhead in the Bay. Sneakerhead in the Bay is the, yeah, yeah, Bay yeah. Area. you're right, you're right. Yeah. The, so I just watched his videos, bro, and just go to Walmart and get all the all the stuff that he would use in his videos. Mm -hmm. And I'd just be in my room just practicing on my beat-up shoes. And then whenever I'd buy some, just flipping. Flip them, yeah. But and then after that, I was like, I'm gonna just take before and afters because mm -hmm. I was trying to do what Retro Snickers mm -hmm. uh Retro Snickers was doing. Mm -hmm. So record like montages of the before and then the after. And then I was still in Lodi. I went to In N Out. I had the camera with me. And I just started taking pictures of randomly, like, the, the cars that were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know what? like Anybody's cars or homies' cars? No, nah, I just, I didn't really 
know anybody like that. Just oh. like my own little group yeah, I had, yeah, but yeah. I didn't really like go out the way like to meet people. So I was just there and just randomly taking pictures of cars. And then whenever I could, like just my friends that had nice cars, mm-hmm. I just tell them like, bro, like let me just practice taking some pictures mm-hmm. and. From there, it just slowly started getting, like, better and started charging people after I got more comfortable, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, between, between, uh, sorry to cut you off, but between you starting to uh, take pictures and start charging people, like, how many, like, cars did you, like, take of or practice? Like, how, how, how? Like, before? Be- before you started, like, like, uh, like, I am going to start charging. Like, when did you think you were good enough? Because I feel like that's what a lot of people, like, deal with. Like, we sometimes underprice ourselves or we do mm-hmm. a lot of work for free because we don't feel like we're good enough. Yeah. And then, like, finally, like, you're like, okay, I need to start getting paid. Not really for the camera, but it's more for the skills, bro. Yeah. It's, like, what you learned. And um, then, like, you pay for the edit. Well, I paid for the editing software. So, like, mm. monthly would I pay for that. And then just the time after I go to work and then sit on the computer and... Like, just started taking my time editing. So, probably about, man, I haven't really thought about it, but it was probably, like, a couple months before. Mm. And I'm, like, my friends would just tell me, like, bro, like, people would pay for this. And then my prices, they were, like, for four or five pictures, like, 25 bucks. <laughs> and, like, there everybody started telling me, like, man, it's too cheap. And I'm, like, I'll just keep it like this mm-hmm. so I can, like, build clientele. Mm-hmm. People know, like, hey, like, he takes pretty good pictures yeah, for yeah, yeah. a good, like, a good price. So started doing that, worked my way into like the truck club because that's like I seen I like like I feel I feel like because uh, truck, mm-hmm, yeah. truck scene the truck scene and the sideshows bro yeah <laughs> so like the sideshows hey was, you were outside yeah you were thugging I was like man just the sideshows was like a different vibe though bro it's like you get that rush of like going to spot to spot and then recording make sure you're not gonna get hit making sure cops aren't coming and you get arrested for having the camera and yeah, yeah yeah all that but i mean it was honestly those are like my favorite videos to do was like those like getting slow motion clips of like cars just sliding and everything w- were you out there solely for the content or that and then or like the people like have you come out or no nah, i was like one of them i did like a little or uh, no nah. so there was just like Whenever they would post, like, we're going to be here, mm-hmm. we're going to be here. I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Get that little group of friends and be like, what's up? Like, what's the move? We out. Yeah, I'm going to bring the camera. And uh, one of my boys from out here, he had um, he had invited me. He's like, what's up? Like, bring the camera. We're going to go to SAC. And that one was pretty cool. A lot of spots. And it's just like a vibe, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then at the time, like, when you get a little bit older, bro, like, it gets tiring. No, in fact, I, like. You start growing up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to get a ticket for just being here, yeah, and, facts. you know, but I mean, and that, you don't want the feds knocking on the door, <laughs> man, just for just for being there. So that's but, not that extreme, but yeah, if they get you, they'll get you. Exactly. But I mean, at the end of the day, like that was kind of like a foot in the door. Mm-hmm. So like not a lot of sideshow people know because like I stopped going to them and stopped doing videos for that. But mainly just whatever cars were out here mm-hmm. or like clubs that would hit me up for like a group pictures and stuff like that I, i'm just curious you got a crazy story like what's the craziest thing that happened at session bro because i've only been to one yeah and i think it was that one time where the one that was out here wait or, when they took your car oh that was a stock for my friend that passed away <laughs> yeah i remember that yeah so that's that one, facts yeah that was i mean that wasn't i wouldn't say that's one of the worst because i mean i got my car took mm-hmm. for no reason just no. for being parked there and I mean, yeah, we were there, but it's just the whole story of, like, every car that was on that block got towed. Yeah, facts. Like, even the people it, that live there, he's yeah. like, why are you taking my car? Like, I live here. And they're like, oh, like, any car on this street? I'm like, that's, like, messed up, that's bro. That's so stupid. But I ended up getting it out, like, a week later, paid my fee, and learned my lesson, you know. But the truck scene is kind of, like, I feel jumped me to a little more... Like being known. That 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 was the, like the head start. Yeah. Or like kickstart, jump start, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um was it one club in particular or were you networking with all of them? Yeah, so it was uh for Ondeados. So that like the club out here. Shout out to them, man. Yeah. I, I feel like they're the most active ones. Yeah. I see the like, they're probably like one of the biggest ones out yeah, here. Yeah, the, their presence is I, I not even in Lodi or two and nine. I yeah, see them in general. Hey, Texas, everywhere the pop up. SoCal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Central Valley. Yeah. But that's kind of, like, where it was, like, a big start right there. Because I had, like, a group of friends that were in the truck club. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, we're going to go to this event, bring your camera, start taking pictures. And then if they want them, just charge them, you know? So a lot of them, too, like, once I made stickers, they all put it on their the back of their window or on the front, wherever they wanted to put it. 
So a lot of like the like supporters and help me like encourage me to get more out there. Like a lot of them in the truck club. What, so was it mainly um, for you? Was it mainly uh, like growing your brand? Was it um, a word of mouth or was it social media? Man, so oh, or both like a healthy balance of both. I feel yeah. like it was both, but I'm just curious what, you're, yeah. what you think. I mean, kind of the. Once I made the actual logo, because mm-hmm. a lot of people were like, oh, like, do you have, like, stickers or anything? I'm like, I don't even got, like, a logo mm-hmm. made yet. So the guy that made most of my stickers for my car, he, um, I told him, it's uh, Quick Graphics in Stockton. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, bro, like, I want to make my own logo. Like, what can we come up with? And then we talked there for a little bit, and then that's how we got my logo. And from there, he just tells me, he's like, on his wall, all the stickers, he's like, this one, like, a lot of people, like, know it. So when I started making like a little bit at first and like I sold out, I'm like, I didn't think people were going to buy them just because I don't know. I'm like, I'm not like, I'm not like famous or anything like that, but for being like just locally, you know, and just seeing like how, how big like exploded kind of like surprised me, you know, people support. Yeah. And, And they definitely fuck with you. And a lot of the people that do support and like are hard supporters are like people that aren't even like, close friends or family it's just random people you know meeting them through instagram or meeting them in the street just they see my car that's mainly what it was was my car like once i threw my at on there and then i I mean i wouldn't say i was the only one out here like Uh with the slam Mm -hmm. honda that year and everything but just the way i didn't give a fuck about that car it was unique (laughs) yeah like like you you knew yeah You, you sticked out and then just like all my stories on instagram like my muffler smacking the reflectors off the freeway and stuff like that. Like, it was a brand new car. It's supposed to be reliable, and, like, I just ruined it by just <laughs> slamming it. Uh, but that car, honestly, is, like, what made people, you know, know me. Yeah. That, and then after that, once I just made the logo, just try to expand it more. And now, you know, doing these signs. And I do real estate videos on the side, just not as much as, like, I was back here doing videos for people. And um, doing shoots because moving out there kind of got to start over again. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows 10 gen visuals out there, so we got to like, you know, expand and start from scratch again. But ba- much. B- basically, yes and no. Yeah. Yes, new location, new clientele, but all the skills and um, lessons you learned in business that like you're gonna carry, like they stay with you. You know, yeah. you just gotta work to their demographic. I got a question though, man. 10 gen visuals. Where did that come from? So just because my at was that 10th gen. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, what can I call my photography page? Mm -hmm. So I thought of like 10th gen lens, like just random other stuff. Uh Because I was just like, everybody knows like 10th gen. So I'm Mm going to just try to keep that in there. And a lot of people did like media or um, visions Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I'm like, like, visual sounds kind of cool. So I just did that and then just stuck with that and. Now that's just me. Tension visuals. Yeah. That's dope, bro. That's dope. Um, I noticed you uh you f- photograph cars, models, um, videos for like businesses and like and like even like portraits for families, right? Yeah. What do you have most fun doing? To be honest, bro, it'd probably be the cars. Really? Like the rolling shots, yeah, just yeah. hanging out the window and trying to get like that perfect shot. Me and uh, me and one of my boys one time, we were doing it right here in the back rows, uh-huh. like on Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th- we are waiting for this car to pass. And I'm like, bro, like, needs to hurry up. So my body was already out the window, had the camera. And we pulled back to the side because we were in the other lane. And turns out it was a, a highway patrol or a sheriff. And I'm like, no way. So I just hopped back in the car and then put my seatbelt on. And my boy's like, hey, he's flipping it. And then he pulled us over. And my boy, oh, he pulled over. And then uh, the cop came up. He's like, hey, man, like, why are you hanging out the window? <laughs> and I was like, hey, it's like my job. Like, I take pictures. So, you know, we're trying to get those rolling shots. And uh, he was like, oh, well, seems to me like you were racing. I'm like, we're in a normal SUV. It's a rental car. And we're just trying to take some pictures. And he's like, hey, tell your friend in the Corvette, like, if he doesn't want to get a ticket, he should just leave. So I texted him. He took off. Ended up getting a ticket for no seatbelt. You? Yeah. And then I was like, man, like, this is the last thing I need right now. Just ticket costs more than the yep. photo shoot. <laughs> like, man. But it's just like, you know, can't really predict what's going to happen 
doing any type of photo shoot. You never know. Like, anything random can happen. Accidents can happen, like, right next to you, in front of you. So it's like, doing the the photography stuff, though, it's just, I don't know. You have your certain vision, how you want to create it. And if you want certain things certain ways, but, like, they don't agree to, like, see the same vision mm-hmm. you have. But when you do, like, end up making, like, that final product, you, like, surprise them. And be like, man, like, his idea ended up turning out, you know, a little bit better than what I expected. But um, the main thing for me, though, is I like doing videos more than pictures. Mm-hmm. Mainly for the fact, like, you're making something for somebody to see. Yeah. So you you show what you want them to see. You can't just, you know, record random cars just driving through traffic and then they're supposed to pick out, like, what they're supposed to see. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you do, like, your cinematic shots. Yeah. You do uh, certain lights, certain colors to give, like, feel and all that. I, I, I honestly think that's why uh, you became so known for it. Because it wasn't just, like, a, a car picture. Mm-hmm. It was, like, a movie. They were, like, little mini movies, your your videos. Yeah. And also, they were, um, uh, the photos were so different. Like, like the location the way they were shot like you just said the rolling shot man like they yeah. weren't your average ass photos like just like a parks car yeah like, it's just parked somewhere random yeah, no nah, no nah, it looked yeah. like a freaking fast and the furious type mm-hmm. of vibe man so yeah. and i think people really dig that that's why they really followed you and stuff yeah. like because it was something different mm-hmm. and it was very refreshing and it was cool bro it's freaking cool like i think how many cars do you think you photographed Man, over a hundred? Yeah, easily. Easy. Damn. Yeah. Just like but, from from the start to now, it's, it's, yeah, it's up there in the hundreds for sure. Oh shit! Just because like I've done groups <laughs> of cars and single people, car clubs, yeah, videos of like a whole group of cars, mm-hmm. like car meets and mm-hmm. everything like that. So all that added up, yes, yeah, it has to be a couple hundred. That's tight, bro. Yeah, that's sick. Odds. Uh, um, I noticed uh, in your in your videos when you make the the videos with your cars or with um, a business or something, mm-hmm. it's a big mixture of English and Spanish music. Yeah, it, it's either like some hood, almost like trap music, or it's some like old school '90s, '80s, like something my mom loves listening yeah. to. Yeah, uh, like uh, you remind me when I when I watch your videos, it reminds me of like that one meme where El, uh, what is it, Tupac. And Chalino, like, oh, shit. like dabbing up, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that's like the playlist be like, yeah. So, um, and I really feel like the music completes the video. So, uh, like, where like your music taste, bro? I I love the balance. Like, you've always like like both both sides because yeah. usually people just either like English or Spanish, but or country or country, yeah. yeah. So so like you've always f- fucked with both. I honestly, bro, like if it slaps and it gets me like bobbing my head, like I'll slap it, bro, yeah. like. I like country. Honestly, country music makes me like want to drink more than Mexican music. Swear. Like, I don't know what it is about country, bro. It's just like they're telling that story about, you know, they got their 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 cow stolen, can't find Stop it. So he's all sad and I'm like, bro, like I can't relate, but you know, it just makes <laughs> me want to cry with you. Like I feel your pain, bro. But uh, hey, t- t- tell me tell me one I I I'm maybe I've never given it a shot. Tell me one country artist or one country song. I'm going to look this up. Oh, uh, man. Uh, well, one that like that's your jam. You want like that old country or like the newer country? And give me, give me some, give me one new one old. I'm yeah. gonna look this up. All right, so like for the older one, I say like Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw. He got he got some slappers in there. Um, newer stuff, I say like, man, can't really fit. I, if anything, I'll send you my country playlist. <laughs> See, you can just go through and pick which ones yeah, you like. Yeah, yeah. But like, I don't know, bro. Like my music taste has always been like just everywhere for mm. country like i'll listen to that mainly because like my mom she listened to country mm-hmm. my family like on her side they're more country mm-hmm. and just rap it's just something i've always liked spanish music you know my dad's side of the family they play more mexican so i'd listen to whatever my dad was like listening to him back then i'm not gonna lie being in the car with your dad and he's playing these like older mexicans i'm like man turn it off like when you're a kid yeah, like, yeah. once you get older you're like Man, like this is actually like a like a slapper. Like I'll actually listen to this. Gets you in the mood to clean the house, you know, just giving you a pine pine salt vibe. Yep. Getting ready to clean, getting ready to cook or anything like that. Speedado, speedadora. Yeah, start vacuuming and everything. <laughs> and then like even like Suicide Boys, like it's like that Ooh, like emo rap. Yep. You know, it's like I don't know whatever. If it gets me like shaking my head, like ooh, like I feel this, like all. all it's a vibe. Like, yeah, I listen to Indian music. 
There's like some Indian rap, man. People sleep on it. That, I damn, Jay. Especially I, if you got like subs and you just uh, in the car, like you don't know what he's saying, but like just like the whole tone, you're like, oh, like man. <laughs> That's funny, bro. Shout I, out to the Indian homies. Hey, sh- <laughs> hey, sh- shout out to the Indian homies. Man, putting us on with that rap, man. Hell yeah. Uh, it's, um, s- something else I want to ask you was um, uh, it's like all all uh, your pictures are really good. You would almost think you went to school for this, mm-hmm. but is it self taught? Somebody put you on a mentor, or did you go to classes, or how'd you yeah, learn, bro? I, I always wanted to take classes for it. I just never took the time to like sign up, and mm-hmm. so most of the stuff was just whatever free programs I could get at the time to like mm-hmm. show you how to edit. Until like, I actually started paying for like Lightroom and Adobe and all that, mm-hmm. but just a lot of a lot of people think you need like two thousand dollar camera just to make like a picture like look amazing yeah yeah but the camera that my mom had was like a six hundred dollar canon stock lens and literally just taking average yeah just random pictures and it's all in the editing bro like mm. even with the camera doing videos like that yeah yeah just editing made it look like i took it on the two thousand dollar camera thousand dollar camera and it's just the way you just work with what you have to be honest bro like People think you need, oh, I need this lens so I can achieve this. And it's like, just editing it, you can make it look like you use that. It might not look like 100% like it, but it'll look close enough to where it's like, that's still a good picture. You know, they took their time to edit it. They edited it pretty good. So people, I've, I've done a video off my phone, bro. Mm-hmm. And the dude, we did it because I forgot my battery. So much stuff has happened, like doing videos and pictures. Like, oh, I forgot my SD card forgot a battery or something happens my phone saved me like twice and you just put it in and and they didn't even notice can't even tell the difference because it's still a video it's just as long as you do your movements right yeah you know learn how to edit it it'll look just as good it's not the product but it's the skills you use to work with that product because i've even think about that like with instruments there's cheap instruments there's expensive instruments but you can buy somebody a two thousand dollar guitar Oh, they don't know how to how to strum it or yeah. play it. They're gonna be uh, a guy. A guy that knows what he's doing is gonna run circles with a hundred dollar guitar. Yep. Now, and th- that's true. And I feel like that's what stops a lot of people from um, uh, like moving forward. Yeah. Because they they think they need the best of the best. Like they need the special cleats. They need the special lens. They need the special like item to get started. And I th- I th- I honestly think you learn more in just actually doing it. Mm-hmm. doing it then you know where you kind of lack and you just know you need to get a little bit better what to work on what, and i think that there's skills and also just working with what you have yeah working with what you have for sure makes you really like appreciate the, the grind and the come up no yeah no that's for sure right there this like facts like the main thing like a lot of people even would dm me like hey like i'm starting off with this camera like what tips do you have and i'm just like bro like I even send them what I use, and they're amazed. They're like, oh, I thought you use this camera. I'm like, no, like this is really what I use. So I just tell them like, just go wherever they want to go. You know, like random spots, mm-hmm. take pictures of plants or mm-hmm. random cars you see, just your friends. Mm-hmm. Work with what you have and just practice. Like, take a picture, you edit it, and just for the next time you take it, like, oh, what did I do here that I can improve next time on this picture? Or if I take portraits of people, what do I need to focus when I'm making the picture mm-hmm. look a certain way? Because at the end of it, when people ask, like, oh, who took your picture? Like, who edited it for you and all that? Like, this guy did it. Here's yeah. his info. Send them your way and start building your clientele. And a lot of people, too, they'll um, ask for certain, like, styles of things. Like, they want, like, pictures a certain way. Mm-hmm. They want, um, and, man, one thing, like, I noticed they want certain stuff taken in, like, their perspective. But when you show them, like, your vision, like, what I would do is I'd make two copies. So if they wanted to picture their way, like, black and white, mm-hmm. or um, they want no blue in it, I'd send it to them that way, and then I'd edit my own version of how I wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah. And, like, here's two copies. So if you want to post one without color or whatever, you know, yeah, they have options. Yeah. And I won't charge them extra. It's just because... Like, I don't know. I have to have my stuff a certain way. Yeah, and It was a courtesy, but it was also, like, you wanted to give them your vision. Yeah. So, like, here's, like, here's what I came up yeah. with in case you want it, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's what I liked, but... And how would that work out most of the time? Would, would the people, like, really, like, like 
what you gave them like apart from what they asked for or yeah. would it just be like something extra like, yeah uh i mean for sure like they would just be like, oh like i appreciate you like took the time to mm-hmm. you know edit another picture but half the time like i'd just see that they would post my version ah. and then they'd keep their version just to and have it yeah yeah, yeah. But, which is like that's cool like i offered both and just gave you both so you know you just pick whichever one you like the most no, that, that's cool, bro. Yeah. And that's nice of you, man. I understand, like, you always, uh, I think as a creator, you always, like, want to bring your vision to life. And also, like, like the way you treat people, I think, goes a long way. Yeah. Like, taking care of them. Mm-hmm. Taking care of them is what, like, makes them, one, speak good about you, and two, like, come back. And usually come back with a friend or come back with somebody else. Or that, refer, like, family. Refer, exactly. Yeah. No, uh, that's tight, bro. That's tight. Um, uh, you said you did real estate, bro. When did that start? So it started when I moved out to to Corona because one of my boys out here, he's like, hey, bro, like I play Fortnite with this dude Mm -hmm. and he lives in Downey. So it's kind of like 30 minute drives, not Mm -hmm. too far. Um, He's like, he does real estate, you know, just hit him up and see if he'll let you do a video for him, pictures, you know, to try it out, see if he could work something out of it. So I met up with him. We ended up uh, doing a video and it was my first one. So I kind of wanted to just, you know, just record what I needed to record. Mm -hmm take it home and practice to see like what his vision is because he knows real estate videos they want them certain ways or you know certain songs yeah and he's never picked a song for any of the videos like out of the the couple that i did he's like i trust you just pick whatever so like my thing is like a lot of people pick songs and i'm like hey like here's how i edited it and here's like what i hear in my my head Mm -hmm. like what looks good with this and i'll send it to him and they're like, you know what? Let's like, let's just do that song. So uh, most of the songs I like are like <clears throat> common songs that are like popular, mm-hmm. but like the the chopped and screwed versions, like slower ones. Mm-hmm. Just because like most of the shots are all cinematic and slow, mm-hmm. so you don't want like a fast song with like slow clips, you know. And, and I think you also want something like almost relatable. Yeah, and there's something that like people recognize. Yeah, or they hear it and they're like, ooh, like yeah. I've never heard this version. Yeah, like, exactly. It's hard. Yeah, so. Most of the songs are like chopped and screwed or um, older, older songs that, you know, people kind of forgot about. Just bring it out, you know, like classics, the, the vault. Yeah. Yep. And a lot of people are like, man, like, I don't know. I say I'm, I'm 20, I'm about to be 25, but I'm like, I'm young, but have like old soul, like older, older songs, you know, they kind of like, this is more, I like this. Some of the newer stuff is like a little, you know, kind of a little aggressive or mm-hmm. I don't know. A lot of people scream and can't even understand what they're saying, stuff like that. But you, you don't like that? No, I mean, like, 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 like t- today's music, like, like the, what's whatever is mainstream now. Like, you like the cl- the. I feel like TikTok plays it out a lot, mm. and then you just hear it too much to be like, man, like it's kind of getting annoying. Yeah, and then just hearing it like constantly is like. That's why, I like, a lot of the songs I listen to, like, I'll listen to it. People ask me for it, I'll send it to them, but. I like just playing it low key, and then once I start hearing people play it over and over, I'm like, man, like, kind of plays it out for me, you know. So most of the songs, I try to just throw it whatever looks like it goes with that video, like kind of vibes it gives, mm-hmm. and just put it all together. And I'll just watch it back like 10, 15 times, just from start to beginning. Just what can I adjust here? What can I do to make it feel more, you know, like more vibey? Uh-huh. I guess you know. You're, you're also a perfectionist. Yeah. 10, 15 times? God damn, man. Just so I can, like, what did I notice that changed here? If, it, if I, like, cut it too short, cut it too late, you know, stuff like that. Just, I don't know. And, and those and those little mistakes, typically, you're, you're the only one that's going to notice them. Yeah. And, yeah. like, even stuff that I don't like, like pictures I've done and I edit it, I'm like, dude, like, I don't like this. It don't, looks like crap. And then I'll show it to somebody else. And I'm like, oh, dude, like, that's, that's fire. I'm yeah. like, we're our own critics, but at the same time, it's just like, that's, you know, our product or we're, our picture we're putting out with our name on it. So it's like, you don't want to get judged for certain things. You want to be able to put it out and consider it like, I'm perfect. I, not, not I'm perfect, but Pictures Perfect came out how I wanted it because some people will like it. Some people will hate it. And me, I just learned to just, if I like it, throw it. You never know because they might not like how certain people take pictures and stuff like that. They see how your style is and like, oh, that's different. I'm going to try it out. Come up with a new customer. They refer them to other friends and just keep everything just cycling. Flowing. Yeah. And and and, and sometimes you just have to uh, 
uh, upload or press record because if, if you if you wait till your picture is perfect, you're never going to put out content. Or mm-hmm. you wait till your video is perfect, you're never going to put out content. Or right? if you wait till you have like ten thousand dollar equipment to start a podcast versus just using your phone, yep. you and your homie just sitting there is like, bro, like. Hey, you got to start somewhere, man. <laughs> now everybody's just going to get that $5,000 camera and start taking pictures, you know? <laughs> no, sir. You always got to start somewhere. If I had a phone, bro, like starting just taking pictures and videos, I would have just used that until I just saved up enough to buy my own camera. Because you, you could do a lot of stuff with what you have, bro. 100%. And a lot of people just don't want to try it because they feel like it's not going to be good enough. But it's like, you got to start somewhere. You're not just going to be perfect right off the bat. And just be good at everything. You have to start somewhere, learn your craft, whatever you're doing, and then just slowly work on mistakes you make and learn to not do them again and learn what to improve. And, man, that's what I try to tell people, man. That's facts, though. Yeah. Facts. Usually I'm behind the camera, so it feels kind of weird being in front of the camera, you know? It switches it up a bit, huh? Yeah. Uh, but when you're behind the camera, man, what helps you get creative? Is it the music? Is it, I, I know you huffing and puffing. Does that help? Or is that more like a relaxer? Or like um, what what, helps the, what keeps the creative juices flowing? Honestly, I try to stay away from the huffing and puffing because a lot of that, sometimes like that's what makes me forget my SD card or the battery. <laughs> and then I'm like, bro, like I just need to do this after, you know? Yeah. yeah, way, yeah. I'm just focused. focused. But usually like whatever I'm listening to at that time, whatever song like i just heard like newer Mm -hmm. songs and stuff and i just hear it and i just kind of like picture like what would go with this Mm -hmm. type of like beat or the song so listening to like music or even just listening to like the song they want yeah will kind of help me like that's usually what i tell people too like if they want a video i'll just tell them like what song do you have in mind i'll listen to it a couple times and kind of like pick what spot would be good to do the video if they want a video done at a certain spot kind of just see what i can work with and play the music in my head. Yes. Yeah. Kind of visualize it as I'm, like, recording, you know? Um, you also talking about, like, making mistakes and, like, getting off track, which mm-hmm. happens to all of us. What, what are some mistakes people should avoid when, like, getting into photography? If you don't have, like, a low-light camera, just try to stay away from, like, nighttime. Mm. Usually I always just... Not when it's too bright, because uh-huh. you get that nasty, like, over overexposed bright. But I say usually just before sunset time or, like before uh before it gets to sunset so like right now it gets dark around six uh-huh. so i say uh, around like 4 30 just like figure out where you're gonna go because once you start driving to the spots like you see the sun start going down yeah. and um it's a race against time at that at that yeah place but usually it's just i i, I like darker environments mm-hmm. more because you can always edit it like while you're um like if you want to throw a sun and then throw like a sunset. You can always Photoshop that. And Photoshop's a lot of people get scared of it. I'm still scared of it because there's so many buttons. Yeah, like a lot of stuff. It's does. intimidating. Yeah. So one thing I just learned from TikTok and Instagram, you see reels. They show a lot of like how to do this, what to do if you, you know you took a picture that's overexposed, like how you can fix it. And that's like from being, you know, just from taking pictures and doing mm-hmm. it myself. A lot of, like, videos that are free out there, I try to watch as many as I can, just show you a lot of stuff that, you know, maybe you don't know, and it'll help you also. Next time you take pictures, you can always play with whatever extra pictures you have, and, oh, you can do Photoshop this way and change the sky, just throw it on there, see how it looks. You might like it, and then next time you do a photo shoot, just, all right, I'm going to throw this guy in it, because if you have a plain sky, it doesn't look very exciting, you know? Or if you don't have a good sunset, just throw it in and make it look like there was a nice sunset, you know? So that's one thing I like about Photoshop is just you can make reality, you know, fiction. Make it look like you're in space. (laughs) Do stuff like that. And you talk about learning that on, like, Reels and TikTok and all that, man. I I took college courses to, like, learn that exact same thing you're talking about, bro. And I'm talking about two or three times a week one hour classes Mm -hmm. and now that i'm starting this podcast like i learned everything on youtube just like in 10 20 minute videos bro just like i'll do this do that and uh because there's some good ass like tutorials out there Mm -hmm. on like just 
on a step by step. Yeah, and uh, it explains it all. It explains it all, and I'm yeah. like, man, this is how I think. Like, man, man like co- college, unless you're going there for STEM, like science, math, engineer, some, something like top level. Like, mm-hmm. you don't need it for like stuff like this anymore. Yeah, dude, because everything's just out there. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people, they don't even care anymore. That's just a lot of people pay for this. I'm yeah. just throw it out there mm-hmm. for people, you know, that want to learn. And that's like one thing I wish I would have had like before I, when I first started. But honestly, times are different. You know, we didn't have certain stuff that we yeah. do now. And honestly, I just like how I learned physically, just doing it myself. I'm more of like learn how to do it myself mm-hmm. than having somebody like talk to me and just sit there listening. You know, a lot of people learn different ways. But that's my way. It's just physically doing something, learning from my own mistakes and then just working on it, you know. And now uh, getting back to the photography, uh, the photography, the real estate. Yeah. Did you know what you're getting yourself into when you mm. accepted that gig, or like, is this all brand new to you too? Nah, bro, it's just the whole different ball game. Like, yeah, you're not, you're not recording a parked car, you know. It's just the whole. But it's a parked house. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, certain real estate people look for certain angles uh-huh. in their videos, so it's just something. Like, I'm not gonna focus on the coffee cup. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get like a whole living room. Yeah. Or, the whole bedroom, that their pool, whatever they want to focus to, like try to get people to buy that house, stuff like that. Yeah, you you're trying you're trying to off pictures, you're trying to like get people to be like, I want to live there. Yeah, make it like, oh, this I want this to be my home. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I try to just work with even that that because you don't have lights there, you know, unless you bring your own stuff. So natural light is like a big play in it. I like having all the windows mm-hmm. open, let as much natural light yeah. come in so it doesn't look too, you know, like... Dark, depressing, yeah. sad, yeah. yeah. Try to give it that warm home mm-hmm. feeling, you know? Yeah, facts. Yeah, so that's why I learned, slowly still learning more things about it, but it's a good foot in the door. That, open new doors. Yeah, hey, man, good. Like, the power of a camera, man. Yeah. In today's world, like, our, our, uh, our previous generation... I don't think there was this many opportunities, but now you can literally get a camera and like start making money. Yeah. If you like practice and like work hard and put yourself out there, like I see a lot of opportunities now, man. And even talking with you, like, cause, cause you got your foot in uh, people, cars, houses. I'm like, man, bro, like, yeah, you're never going to go hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope, man. That's, that's the, you're a real entrepreneur, man. Yeah. I just, whatever, I can, you know, stick to and try to make it work. But mainly these signs, it's just like the main thing that I've been like trying to focus on right now. The videos are cool and stuff, but I don't know. I feel like this is my natural. I want to focus on this and try to perfect this craft right here. Hey, real quick, man. Shout out to you, dog. Completing the studio with the freaking Valley Vibe signs, bro. This piece, man. So... Tell me about this, bro. How'd you get started? How'd you like get into it? Like, I know this is new. Like, is how old? How many months have you been doing it? Man, since uh, it was like December, January. Oh, this is new, oh, new. Yeah, like like, like three, of, four months. Like end of Thanksgiving, beginning yeah. of December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. So this is not even half a year. Yeah, no, bro. And you're already. These are sick, man. Yeah, I thank get com- you. I get compliments all the time. Like, no, nah, thank you, man. Yeah. One thing I got to tell you, man, that I really appreciate, and you know, I even want to tell you this on camera, um, like you, you, because you're such a perfectionist, and I get it, because we're always going to be our biggest critics. Mm. Chris wasn't happy with how the first time came out, so he told me, hey, bro, I'm going to do you a solid, I'll make you another one. So now I got the one right behind me, so I got two, got and I was like... Hey, bro, let, let me bless you. He's like, nah, man, it's good. Like, 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 I wanted it to come out good. And literally, you got to get a microscope to see the imperfections. But, hey, bro, shout out to you, man. Like, this is yeah. how I know you're a good guy. And, like, like, man, bro. want to make sure, you know, if you're paying for something, you're happy with it. Take care. Like, this is why people need to need, need tap in. But, <laughs> nah, so how did it get started? So there's this dude in, uh, in Manteca. His name's Trey Simulator on Instagram. And all I've noticed, because the, the art pieces, like, they're dope. Like, how it, that epoxy has, like, that glass look. Mm-hmm. and The shine. Yeah. So, I noticed what he does, though, is, like, he'll make, uh, he considers it, well, not considers it, like, it is art. Mm-hmm. But he'll make certain, so he'll make six of them. Custom pieces? Yeah. Okay. And then once he sells out those, like, he's not going to make them again. So, if you don't get it then, then you just got to wait till whatever next drop he does. And if it's a different piece. So that's why I noticed is like he doesn't do custom pieces for like just anybody, you mm-hmm. know. So I wanted like 
to figure out how he did it. And I went on YouTube. Again, YouTube, YouTube. has everything on there. Um, there's this dude. He showed how he made it. Uh-huh. And I just told my dad, I'm like, hey, if you can give me some, like, some scrap piece of wood so I could just practice. Uh-huh. Went to Michael's. Bought everything and made mine with my logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "That's the one I saw." Yeah, that, that's when I I remember I reached out. I was like, "Bro, where'd you get that?" Yeah, and I made it honestly too big. Like I didn't know what I was getting into. Yeah. So you know, just messing with the wood and that thing is freaking huge, like the size of this table. What? Yeah. <laughs> so that's one thing. I first thing I was like, "All right, I gotta make these a little bit smaller." You know, <laughs> yeah. everybody's gonna want a big sign. So practice doing mine. Went to Michael's, got all that stuff, and. As soon as I posted it, like everybody's like, dude, like that's dope. Mm-hmm. But what I noticed he doesn't do, he doesn't put lights and uh, even just the back in general. Yeah. Looks a little different. So like I make all the hanging mounts, mm-hmm. the standoffs. I just make it all there at home. And once I started doing like custom pieces after that, it's just like people are like, oh, he can make me whatever I want. Like it doesn't have to just be whatever he makes, you know, not everybody's going to want my logo in their house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my thing is just whatever you can like imagine i'll I'll make it happen make whatever you want come to life hey you're getting busy real quick though yeah every day i see you working on working on signs yeah that that's dope man like it's and it's business owners uh personal uh like photos too you said Mm -hmm. and cars yeah and And then what works out too is like i can take my own pictures uh for my own products but i just haven't I haven't really got to there yet. Like, I, I kind of wanted to work on my vision of how I want to, like, when I make my Instagram page for it. Yeah. I wanted to have, like, an opening video uh-huh. to, like, kind of introduce, like, what I'm doing, what I have to offer. So, I'm still working on uh, still working on that to try to figure out, like, how I want to start this whole... Have you thought of any names? I think, like, VSL signs. Kind of like YSL, but VSL for visuals. <laughs> Because that, that visual is just is sticking with me, man. The 10 Gen name is just is stuck with me. Yep, now. yep, yep. So, I was like, a lot of people just know me as 10 Gen. Just keep that 10 Gen going. So, I got my logo for my visuals brand and then kind of started for the whole sign stuff now. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> just keep it going till all the tires fall off. Uh, how do you make these into clocks, too? I see you be making these into, like, clocks yeah so i mean i made a pretty big one into a clock so the same way i do the i make little grooves in the back Uh i just router it and instead i just do it the shape of the little uh the back of the Uh clock and then just drill the hole make sure it fits right and then paint it do all that stuff pour the epoxy i let it cure and then i just drill the hole back because of the epoxy getting yeah. in there, and then just stick it, put all the hardware, and it's a clock. It's a clock. Yeah, that's sick, bro. Like yeah. you're, you're. It's cool how you were inspired by something, and just out of the lights, made it into a clock, made them custom. Yep. Like th- this is all we're doing, man. We're, we're we're not reinventing the wheel. We're just giving it our own twist. Yeah. And so this, like, props to you, man. Props to you, and always being like a creator, man. Yeah. Like, like it's it's in your blood, man. It's in your blood. Man, yeah. Honestly, I think I get it from my dad because he's always just been like a hands on guy. You know, mm. whatever he can do, even just working his normal hour jobs yeah. and like after work, he'd do side jobs. He'd take me with him to work in the morning when he'd work at my uncle's uh, commissary for like the taco trucks. Yeah, I was like six years old helping him work on like the their stove don't work in the taco truck. I'm over there helping them at like five in the morning, you know, 40 degrees outside. I'm cold. <laughs> but honestly, that's what I like though. Is like, I got that work ethic from my dad, which is just like, yeah, you got your normal nine to five job, mm-hmm. you know, but if you can do stuff like this on the side and make extra money, you yeah. got more money to enjoy life and take a vacation. If you want buy stuff you want. Cause as soon as I turned 16, my mom, she was like, you're getting a car, you bought it yourself, now you got to pay your bills, you got to pay, if you want to go out, you got to put gas in your car, help me build my credit, so it just like started young. Bro. Wow, yeah. so they put you on that too? Got me like a Chevron gas card, Yeah. so it's just like, you're going to need gas, so start doing that, got a Target gift card, or not gift card, credit card, yeah, you yeah. know, just buy a charger, pay it off, small stuff like that, and if I honestly, if my mom never did any of that, I wouldn't have like no credit. I wouldn't even know about and how to start credit on my own, you know? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's one thing, like, that that's I, wish, dope, I wish they taught bro. you that in high school, bro. Exactly. No, like, for you to know that at that early age, bro, 
I didn't figure that out till I was like 21. Yeah, see, that's why I was like, school is... I've never had to do anything with science outside of school growing up, like with any job or even like history, stuff like that. Like, I mean, yeah, we have like, it's cool to like to know what happened in the past, mm-hmm. but like, how is this going to help me as soon as I graduate? Really unnecessary. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'll learn it, but is this going to help me as soon as I walk out like this high school? Mm-hmm. So I, I feel the school system now, it's a little bit outdated and it's more like a memorization game. Just like because because it doesn't teach you how to think it tell it just tells you what to think but it doesn't teach you like um they it doesn't tell you you should think it yeah. just tells you like think this way yeah and just follow it yeah like it's almost like programming you know? yeah and um and I, I I even this is just me and my conspiracy Ooh. ass I'm I, glad I, you're on that page bro. <laughs> I could talk about that all day. <laughs> I, nah, about I, ju- I just feel like the, the, the system is to like kind of keep you stupid. Yeah. Like keep you a nine to five worker. They don't want you woke, man. They no. don't want you to realize you can be your own boss and make your own life decisions. Choose how you want to live your life. You know, they want you to just, all right, you go to work, go home. That's it. Just keep repeating it. Can't yeah. do nothing else. There's so much opportunity. And especially today. These opportunities that are here today mm-hmm. were not available 10, 15, 20 years ago, man. Yeah. And, and for us, like, like, it's never been easier. I, I can understand now why the older generation gets mad at us. It's because it's, it's, they really struggled. And the people before them, you know, I bet you even struggled more. Nowadays, yeah, we have first world problems, bro. Yeah. We li- literally, we somebody gets our order wrong at a drive thru. We, some people throw a fit. Yeah, bro. Uh, or even like our Wi Fi don't work. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like our parents, they didn't they ain't have Wi Fi, you know? <laughs> we, we consider that like a big problem. But it's like a lot of the stuff now is like you need Wi-Fi. Yeah. When COVID happened, you know, you had to go on Zoom like for work. Some people worked from home and it's like if you don't got Internet, can't work. Yeah. That's why I was like, bro, like that's kind of scary. It's like everything is getting so like advanced and fast. Yeah. And it's like a lot of the older people, too, is like what if they can't afford to buy a Tesla? All these electric cars like. They're trying to ban, I think, gas cars by 2035 or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, what about the people that can't afford that? Yeah. Then what are they supposed to do, you know? I'm not going to ride a bike. Being 80 years old, 90 mm-hmm. years old, it's like, they got to think about the people. Um, That's what that's why also is a survival of the fittest, too. Because um, we, we, we live in a very, like, selfish world. Like, I feel like a lot of people... No, our government. Our government says they care, but they don't I don't think they. Re- I don't think they really care about. Like it. that train that exploded, bro. Mm. They're trying to say like, oh, your water is boiling. Like you pour water in a cup, it started sizzling. A lot of people were posting that, and they're like, oh yeah, you're good. You can drink it. Um, damn man, we're really gonna get into this. <laughs> hey, hey, if I'm gonna get canceled, it's gonna be this one. It's good. <laughs> Got uh, it out. The the cough to me was hella fake. The cough era. Yeah, fake as hell. And, and this whole train thing that you talked about kind of proved it to me because toxins in the air chemicals in the air like you said water boiling and they're like oh it's safe yeah and i'm like and these are the same people that told us to get a piece of cloth and cover your face yeah like a mask is gonna save your life yeah and and like like the 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 mind-blowing thing to me was like to walk in a restaurant you gotta have the cloth and then when you sit down you could take it off what the hell was the like, point you're still breathing the same air yeah right? what's, what's the difference I don't know, man, but that, yeah, that was a joke to me. I still got the vaccine though, but it's because I'd already paid for my trip for Hawaii and everything. I'm like, I guess I didn't get the booster or anything like that. But if it was my choice, I would have just found a way like to avoid that. It's, in my, it's in my body now, L, though, bro. Man. L, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's in me now. But I don't know. Hey, you on a zombie yet? Yeah. Hopefully, I sweat all that stuff out already. <laughs> One way or the other. Yeah. Hey, I, I see you be exercising more now, man. When man. Did, when did you pick that up? Honestly, good for like, you, by the way. Good for you. Thank you. Like being out there, it's just a lot of hills and it's just fresh air, bro. Like mm. wake up in the morning and just go for a walk to just clear your mind. Yeah. And you're getting steps in, mm-hmm. you know. But I just like how it takes me about like an hour. Just do my little normal route going uphill. Damn, that's the, that, that's a that's a walk, bro. An yeah, hour. Good yeah. for you. But I like it, though. It's just like start the day, you know, just. I still have like a little devotional. Mm-hmm. I just read it for that day, whatever. <laughs> What's a devotional? So the one that I have is for men. Mm-hmm. It's just, um, so mine's like a guy that gives his personal life experiences. Okay. And kind of just throws each day is like different. Uh-huh. So it'll be, um, 
relationship advice of like how um how Jesus back in the day like the troubles that they had mm-hmm. comparing it to like how we think our problems are and kind of like mixing both to like help you find your own solution it'll give you the scripture to like look up and read it to like kind of just open you to more hearing their stories Mm -hmm. and kind of apply it to your life and you know just help you if you have any questions like a lot of people think relationships are supposed to be perfect nah you're not supposed to fight Mm -hmm. you know dinner is always going to be there you're not going to have to worry about stuff like that but you need to fight in a relationship yeah it's not always going to be like we agree on everything. And that's like one of the things that kind of being in a relationship, you kind of realize going down the road is each day is not going to be 100 percent. You know, girls get periods and stuff, too. They get moody. You got to learn how to deal with it. And just which is honesty, bro. Just be honest. Communication. Yeah. Just talk, bro, because a lot of people, they'll just. Oh, like I'm mad at him. I'm going to just ignore him. Just be in bed. And like, what's that going to get out of it? Like, you're just not going to talk about the issue and try to like solve it mm-hmm. versus just letting it, you know. Facing the conflict. Yeah. A hundred percent. But a lot of people are scared of fighting though. But honestly, it's like you have to fight. They're afraid of confrontation. A, a lot of people are afraid Shoot. of confrontation. And uh, I, I agree with you though. on um, Because... C- uh, I feel like sometimes one thing I, I know is an issue in uh, relationships is ego. Friendships, relationships, uh, work or something. Like sometimes like you're going to set yourself up due to having a big ego. Like or your pride, you know. I know that's definitely something I deal with. Um, I'm working on it still to this day. But uh, ha- having having an ego can definitely uh, mess you up. And then another thing too is uh, also... Um, it, it's not a it's not a competition it's yeah. not like you always got to win or, or you always like, got to be right or like point out like oh i did this i did yeah, more yeah. this week or, or keeping score and like yeah. no no like like you just want to keep it going like like you don't you you, you don't need a win you don't have one up you know yeah. it, it's it's about um uh it, it's it's almost like a like a plant, planting a tree like like you just got to water it every day yeah and like, just make sure it has it's all healthy the exactly and yeah, yeah, yeah watch it grow there's gonna be rainy days there's gonna be hot days yeah. but hey man you take care of your plant your foundation you're gonna grow to a beautiful whatever plant you like, grew you know, flowers blossom exactly yeah. that is dope hey man good for you because i uh i i listen to a lot of books now when, when i'm walking or running i'm a, i run a lot mm. and um i even listen to like parenting stuff i'm not a parent but I'm just, uh, I, I, I like getting consejos or like mm. advice, like, cause I, I feel like, um, you, you not, I don't agree with everything I always hear, but like, I like, oh, he's got a point or perspective almost yeah. perspective. Now you can agree on certain things. Exactly. Like, not everything. A hundred percent. But, um, that's good, man, that you, uh, you're that aware, self-aware and I'm pretty sure that even helps out your partner a lot instead yeah. of like shutting everything down or even like being the whole machismo too, or my way or the highway. Cause you can't have that either. Not, yeah. not in a long lasting relationship. Yeah, you have to work together. Yeah, exactly. Make it work. Because at the end of the day, it's like if you get married and you're with that person, you don't want to, like, oh, like, I don't like how he does this. Or just tell him, babe, pick up your dirty drawers from the floor. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to see that on the floor. And yeah. it's just, if not, he's just going to keep doing it. He's yep. going to leave him there. And then you're going to give you more, man. Yep. That's facts. So it's, it's best to put the fire out as soon as you see it kind of just, whoosh, yeah. It gets bigger. True. Um, Damn, bro. Uh, talking about relationships, man. I, f- I feel like now it's harder. Like you don't back then with um, the older generations, you would hear about 10, 20, 30 years together. Now I feel like if you guys make it past five, that's like a miracle. Bro, man. Like, like me and my girl right now, we're almost on two years being together. And honestly, I was like, I didn't even think it was going to get that far. I'm just used to the past, you know, couple months but i was like i'm just tired of that dude like i just want somebody to just grow with bro and just build a life with you know mm-hmm. and just make it happen exactly and not just letting it be if you guys fight you know just all right we're done yeah like no nah, like i don't know but at the same time too it's like when my mom passed um she passed from cancer my condolences and, um uh my stepdad he kicked us out me and my grandma because we were all living there and once, like, I, my mom was, like, my backbone, bro. 
like whatever I needed or like any questions, like she was there. I wouldn't say my dad like wasn't there, but they were divorced. So having like my mom explain like credit and all that to me and helping me like learn finances, like how to save my money, how to budget my money and stuff like that. It's like once like I lost her and I kind of like got like a wake up call, like you're on your own is like it's like the biggest wake up call you can get, bro. And it's just learning how to like grow up. And it's like now you have to really make it work. Like you can't just use all your money and then. All right. Who's going to feed me? Like you have to just make whatever work. And honestly, that's why doing the signs is just like an extra income. Yeah. But something I like doing and something I want to continue to do to make like my full time. If I can make it into a big company, like perfect, it'll work out. But even if it's just making me extra income on the side, still take my time, you know, focus, put my headphones on, just get in my mode, draw, cut, be alone, you know, take that time. It's just like a little getaway and just helps me clear my mind. That's why I like going on those walks in the morning. I'll just take a little joint with me, you know, just spark it while mm-hmm. I'm walking, enjoy the fresh air, take in the views and just enjoy life. Cause each day we're not guaranteed. We have to be thankful and just learn to make the most out of each of our days. Like I'm not going to wake up, start arguing with my girl and just let my day be ruined. Cause we got into a fight. I'll go for a walk, think about what I did or what we talked about and just, all right, babe, like I messed up on this. Let's work on this. Cause our days, bro, is like, we can't get them back. Once what's in the past, we can't go back in time. We can't take back what we did like that. So it's just a lot of people need to take their activities, not activities, like their actions, what they say and like consider really like what they say. Cause I've seen a lot of people, bro, like, I didn't respond to this person. Something happened. They passed away. And then they're living with that guilt. Man, I should have texted him back. I shouldn't have been mad at him. I like to just stay positive, bro. And just, you know, right now when we leave, we don't know if it's going to be like the last time we see each other. But it's like, we got to make this episode. Got to let people know, like, a little bit about me. We have our memories that we have in the past. And whatever yeah. we're going to make in the future. I 100%. like to just stay positive, bro. And just be happy like to really enjoy my life like especially being out there in socal 30 minutes from the beach you know you just drive spark up on the beach bro and just listen to the water just chill you know you're not worrying about what's going on at home just relax in the moment and just start the next day and make the most of it hey chris um i just gotta tell you man you i feel like you hook opening up of what you just talked about with your mom, I feel like that's one of the, if not the most painful struggle an individual can go through. And for you to just have such a positive mindset and such a bright outlook on life, man, like shout out to you, bro. Like that's fucking amazing, man. So many people, we all experience pain. We all have suffering. We all have holes in our heart and you have one of the biggest ones and for you to be so uplifting and positive and I must move forward and she set me up and I'm going to push through with this, bro. Shout, shout out, dude. You're amazing, bro. That's That was beautiful what you just said, man. Thank you, man. I just had to like respect, bro. Big time respect, man. A lot of people that go through pain or go through suffering, they envy that. Yeah. And they, the victim mentality. Why me? Fuck the world. Uh, like like a lot of people turn their back on god and uh, yeah blaming him for losing somebody but it's like the same time bro it's like yeah like that's one of the biggest like heartaches probably i have but like i can't go back in time and i can't you know get my mom back she's gonna want me to move forward she's gonna want me to stay positive like this she never got to see this and that's one thing i wish she did see because i know she'd be happy about that damn i bet you i um maybe not in uh not in uh, flesh and blood, yeah. but in spirit. Yeah. 100%, bro. Cause like, I took these last time. I came down, took them right there to the grave and showed her. Because I know this is like, she'd be happy about that. And she is, bro. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, For she sure. is. Because uh, I'm a man of God, too. And my whole life changed in these last two years when I really, like, just sat down with myself in silence and asked myself what I wanted. And I just, I just started to build a foundation. Health. Uh wealth 
mental and spiritual. Like those are like my four pillars that I focus so much on exercising, taking time for yourself, uh, working on getting that money and just believing in God. Cause uh, I used to, I used to ask God for things. I used to ask God for things and I read in a scripture. I heard this somewhere. I don't want to like misquote or nothing, but basically you, we don't really know what's best for us, but God knows what's best for us. So instead of asking him what you want, just ha- tell him to have you prepared for whatever yeah. is to come. We don't know what life's going to throw at us. Exactly. And uh, blessings to me now are when things go your way. Because I noticed you can set everything up and have everything perfectly planned out and things could still not go your way. So when things do go your way, that's a blessing to me. Yeah. So, um, hey man, I, I, feel, I feel like there's, there's a lot of power in, in having faith, man. Because, it really is. And that, that's also no, it helps you maintain frame because I don't worry about things I can't control. Like things, and especially I stop worrying about financial issues. Not because I have a lot of money or nothing like that. It's just that, like, if it can be bought or or if it, if I can buy it again... It can be replaced. It can be replaced. Yeah. But the real problems of life are, like, health. Those health are... Health and time. Health and time, exactly. And that's one thing, like, I did pick up was just... Because um, a lot of... On both sides of my family, there's a lot of health history and, like, high blood pressure, cancer. And that's one thing I told my sister about. We talked about this the other day. We're like... It runs on both sides of our family, and if we don't do anything about it now, then it can get worse later, and it'll hit us later. And like, I don't know, man. Just, just walking, just like as a start, you know, changing health habits of like eating, stop eating junk food, stop eating like after nine, ten o'clock, soda, candy, all that stuff that you want, you know. It's like, is it really gonna like benefit you like in the long run? Stop drinking soda. I mean, this is, you know, it's just for right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, like, we started drinking, like, sparkling waters to replace it. So we can still get that gassy, yeah. you know, soda feel. That's my substitute. Yeah, the sparkling water is pretty good. Like, a lot of people don't like them, but you just, like, I drink tea with no sugar. Ah. Those, a lot of people don't like that. It's yeah. like that. But, like, just drinking, I got used to it. But food-wise, too, you know, HelloFresh, we signed up for that. You pick your meal plan. They send it to you weekly. You don't have to worry do about you cook it. it or do does it come yeah, cooked? No, you put you cook it. Mm. Gives you like a little paper and explains like step by step. Cut these ingredients, yeah. mix this, so it's, it's kind of easy, and it's it's healthy. Versus going to Jack in the Box again, like a burger, stuff like that. I'm just slowly changing healthy, or like turning bad habits into mm. healthier habits. I try to go walking at least once a day. If not, I'll try to go twice too if I feel. Like energy, go in the morning, go before bed and just shower, lay down, but feel good, you know. Walking is just like a baby step into like, you know, maybe eventually I'll start running. Like I'll, I'll try to do it, but I got asthma and I need to learn how to like breathe right mm-hmm. while I'm running so I can be able to just start going longer. But eventually I just, I want to start being able to like run I want to live long, you know, I want to have my kids whenever I do have kids. I want them to grow up and, you know, have me still living long with them give them the advice that I got. So I help, you know, prepare them for the world because I feel like the world is going to get crazier. It is. So much stuff's going on. Clown world, bro. Yeah. BS. BS nowadays. Man, it's just too much, bro. It's like, why is all this? We're, 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 we're too sensitive. We're too emotional we like we the media is crazy now wants us to like bow down to whatever they say yeah it's it's terrible man and then like kind of just i don't know a lot of kids or not kids but like a lot of the newer people too they just want to give their kids ipads and here just be quiet just take this but it's like nah it's like and then you get mad when they all they want is electronics like bro like i had coloring books i had whatever toys i could play with i wasn't Drawing on an iPad, you know, watching YouTube videos. And we were that, outside. Yeah, you know, drinking out the water hose and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> but I was like, man, like, I just want to I want to give my child, like, the same experience I had yeah. growing up. I don't want them to just live all on electronics. I want them to go out, you know, see stuff. I want to be able to take trips with my family. So that's one thing, like, I want to change my whole, my whole, like, I don't know, my 
my routines. Mm-hmm. I want to make everything more healthy and just try to live long and live a healthy life, bro. Because at the end of the day, it's like you can have all this money in the world, but if you got no health, it's like, are you really like wealth, like wealthy? If you can, you have all this money, but like doctor gives you a year to like live. And then what are you going to do? Just bury yourself with that money. Facts. It's like, I'd rather just be broke, bro, but still out living life, you know, yeah. being able to see stuff I've never seen before. Go places I've never seen. Try foods, bro. I love food. You know, I try everything, bro. Like my boy, he makes Arabic food. I've tried Indian food, Vietnamese. Yeah. Like I got a palate for I, everything, I, bro. I, every culture. They got the fire. Yeah. Every culture got the fire, and man. Every culture, like, they all they all love each other's culture, bro. Like, a lot of Asians love Mexican food. Yo. Mexicans love Asian food, you know? That's like, love right there, yeah. yes, sir. Like, I love me and my sushi, bro. Man, sushi's fire, bro. I love sushi. Yeah. I, I, man, like, you, how long have you been, like, taking your health and, like, life serious, man? Because cause you're you're young. You're 25? About to be 25. You're about April. to, you're, yeah, hey, bro, you're so young, bro. Yeah. Like, I just turned 27, um, and re- recently, right now, like, at age 25, that's when I really, like, took a step back and changed my life, yeah. like, um, I don't regret none of my previous years, at first I was like, man, you're so dumb, you're so blah, 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 but I feel like you gotta make mistakes, you gotta be a, you got to. a young adult, and, you know, yeah. just, you have, to, you have to go through life, yeah, you gotta go through, you gotta yeah. take the L's, basically, you exactly, know, bro. but, but now that we're so central focused, like, I feel like these are what's really important in life, like, yeah. something as simple as your health, for sure, that, um, people I, really need to, like, start actually thinking self-aware about, yeah. self-awareness make themselves more aware about everything and I'm, I'm, I'm like i'm proud of you bro like i always love hearing like when people are like changing their lives for 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 the positive for a better and yeah. i'm glad you have those um those like old uh, they're basically old traits of like how life should be yeah it's in the moment because us as like animals and like humans i don't think it, i don't think we're supposed to be on stuck to a screen all day i don't think we're supposed to be knowing what's going on across the globe like yeah. like why are we worried about what's going on in you know north korea at 11 o'clock at night some dudes eating food from a gas market yeah like stuck to it watching or like it. Vi- yeah or even like crazy ass videos sometimes yeah. like why do i care that lambo crash like you're yeah. you're focused on it for like those couple seconds yeah. and then but, just but th- yeah those couple seconds but those couple seconds add up it's yeah. one video two videos three videos like i even i even hear the whole tiktok band that they want to do like i get it too because i i do feel for them Unless you use uh, social media, I've always or your phone, I've always looked at it as a tool. Yeah, it's either a tool to make you smarter or to make you dumber. But you have the power on like what you're gonna do with it. Um, but damn man, so I'm curious to see where you're gonna be at in a year or two. Like if you just keep going, man, because it's not motivation. Because motivation comes and goes. It's consistency. Yeah. Trust me, bro. There's days where I'm just like, I don't even want to do signs. Yeah. I don't even want to yeah. do pictures. <laughs> but it's just like, man, you just have to like slap yourself out of it yeah it just it's just, that fight against the voice yeah but there, a lot of people doubt themselves but not everybody's perfect you know like everybody has to doubt themselves yeah. they have to go through those feelings and going through all that stuff bro it's just like perfecting your craft mm-hmm. and getting through all the doubts and all like the downsides like these signs aren't going to come out perfect every time i do it say i mix it wrong and then the whole sign is just chalked and i have to start it all over again <laughs> And it's like, you can't really get mad at it. It's just, all right, I did this this time. Make sure I don't do it again for the next time, you yeah. know. But you, life lessons are like the best lessons. Life lessons. And you're living in a lesson with me right now, bro. Like, in this episode right here, man, yeah. I've made all the mistakes you can make ever. Hopefully there's, and I'm pretty sure there's more to come. It's yeah. just, it's it's unavoidable. But, like, you're living in w- with me right here, right now, man. Like, like I-, I feel like I'm a lot better than I was in the first episode. Yeah. But I still know I have a lot to learn. Yeah. But like, it's all a process. And, and yeah. you got to enjoy the process. Because if you don't, sh- nothing worthy in life is is easy. Like, like, it's the struggle that when you finally get to the top of the mountain that you're like, damn, that shit. I worked really hard to get here and damn, that shit was worth it. Because if but, you just, if you just... Somebody just launched you there without any work. You You're not going to know what to do. Exactly. But that's like another thing too is like even those days when you are up, everything is going perfect. You just can't just stick and be like, all right, it's going to be perfect forever. Something's going to happen and you're going to bring back at the bottom and you just have to know how to deal with it. You can't just 
think everything's gonna be perfect one day like oh all my signs are coming out good like they're never gonna mess up and say next time i do it the board breaks in half or anything like that and they're like bro now it's a setback feeling down now i gotta redo this whole thing all over again but it's just you gotta go through those bro you you have to it makes you who you are though it does for sure because you learn you learn from your own mistakes and you also learn from watching other people's mistakes too yes and just don't let your doubts get to you that's one thing that I could really like just put like 100% like this is what I believe in. It's just even on your darkest days when you're feeling like at your lowest, there's always going to be something brighter at the end of the tunnel. And even when it doesn't seem like it, there's always something that is going to like make your day better, make your vibes feel better. You're going to forget about certain things because I've had plenty of days where I'm just like, I just want to be in bed. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want nobody to talk to me. But at the end of the day, man, you surround yourself by, like, good people. You got good people supporting you, checking on you. As much as a lot of people say, like, oh, I got too much time in the day, like, to be focused on, like, on texting your homie, like, hey, bro, like, you good? Even like, one little text like that, bro, can literally just change somebody's whole day. Like, man, this guy thought about me today. He wondered how I was doing. He wondered if I ate. And that's what a lot of people need is just somebody to like to check on them, even if it's just one little text. If you call them, FaceTime them, pull up on them randomly, you can make somebody's whole day because you don't know what anybody's going through. A lot of people could be going through like depression, through you don't know what anybody's going through. They could have had a heartbreak. They could have had like a family member pass away or anything like that. And all they need is somebody to just talk to them. And if you're that one person, bro, you never know. Like, you can change somebody's whole perspective on life. You can save them from doing something that, you know, they would have regret. And that's one thing, like, I'm big on is just check on your homies, check on your family. As much as I go on my way to check for other people, bro, like, I have my my couple real ones Mm -hmm. that do check up on me that, like, I consider, like, my brothers. And that's one thing is just keep yourself surrounded by, like, real people, bro. As much as people say, like, oh, I hear my homie, like, my brother, I'll dab you up. And then, like, are they texting you? Are they checking on you? And that's just one thing. Like, a lot of people surround themselves with, like, fake people. They want to fit in with the crowd. Oh, like, they're doing this. Like, I'm going to do that. Even if they don't even like doing it, drinking stuff that they don't want to drink just because. Just to fit in. Yeah. And that's, like, getting older, bro, is what I realize. Nobody's going to, like baby step you Mm -hmm. the whole way through life like you got to take accountability for yourself you could make your own life how you want it bro because at the end of the day if you're living life a certain way you can only blame yourself because you live by yourself you're doing these things you're hanging around people like this and you get surprised why you got locked up when you're hanging out with dudes that got like 10 guns in the car or something like that you know but (sighs) surrounding yourself with good people bro is like one thing I highly recommend is, like, a lot of people would just get a solid group of friends. Get people that don't even care. You go dressed in pajamas somewhere, bro. Like, as long as you're with your homies, you're chilling, you're vibing. Don't care what anybody thinks of you. Don't care what anybody has to, like, say about you. Because if you're happy at the end of the day, it's like, what does their opinion have to do with my life, you know? If they don't like the way I dress, if they don't like the way I do certain things, like, that's on you, bro. Like, I'm happy. I'm cool. I'm living doing- my life. Yeah. And that's just when people is like, I'd say that they get kind of like this vision from social media. They see rappers with chains and like, oh, I got to have a chain so I can be cool and stuff like that. But it's like, it's not. The, the materialistic items, yeah. the women. I could care less, bro. I could drive like a 86 Honda, bro. Go to the beach, chilling with my girl, bro. Like, I'll be happy. I ain't even caring. I'll just, <laughs> your own happiness is. The best thing that you, like, a lot of people need to focus on, like, aside from health, it's just personal, like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, if you're happy inside, like, be happy, bro. Don't let any little thing bring you down. Just try to stay positive and, you know, mentally keep yourself up there. Damn, bro. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. And the big takeaway there, man, and I can, like even like touch on is you're never going to be able to buy real friendships Mm -mm. you can have all the money in the world bro but but real friends bro real friends are are hard to come by and it's and 
r- real friends are the ones that show up when shit's not going your way, yep. when you're down, when you're out of your luck, when the wor- the worst things like happen. And uh, I I I just I've I've seen it. I've seen it. People come and go. Yeah. But the people that have stayed, I'm like, I'm those fr- are the ones. Those are the ones, man. Yeah. And you got and you gotta um, cherish and and take care of them. Because it's all like a balance. Like, I I love how you you talk about your girl and you also talk about your friends. Because sometimes some people are like they get a girl and move they yeah. they they pull some Dragon Ball Z shape. They just did. Dip. Dip, <laughs> but, and I get it. We've all been there. I'm not gonna yeah. say I never did it, but uh, nah, man. Like you you like just as important the woman, your parents, siblings, your friend. Like you got it's a balance. Yeah. It's a balance. Um. And I just take care, take care of people you love, man. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I'm, I'm heavy on. It's just take care of the solid ones that are with you and just get rid of the fake ones, bro. Facts. As, many, as, as much as people get butthurt, like, oh, you want to follow me? It's like, get tired of seeing your stuff. And it's like, what do you have to benefit? Like, you're not checking on me. Mm-hmm. You're just posting. You're going out doing whatever. It's like, but when it's something that I need or, like, need help with, like, where are you at? Yeah. You know? So, like, the solid groups I have with my friends that are in there, bro, is, like, those are, like, dudes I die for, bro. Just the realest ones, bro. Like, and they're not even, like, I don't know if you know my friend Nan. So, um, him, bro, like, I met him through a mutual friend. And I'm heavy on, like, I don't care if you know somebody for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I met him probably, like, two years ago, bro. And it feels like we've known each other forever. Like, we've always been there for each other. I crashed my car. He pulled up in, like, an instant. He helped me working on cars. I help him, whatever he needs help with. We're always smoking together. We're chilling. You know, somebody's tripping off of us. Like, we're doing this together. Like, that's, like, that's like one dude right there. Like that's Solid. A brother from, like, another mother. Sheesh. And we, like, fuck, bro. I, I have the exact same. Uh, it, it doesn't matter the time. It's about the quality. Yep. Uh, facts, because... Um, Shout out to my boy uh, Gerardo. Same thing, man. Like probably like we we linked up during the cough era. Yeah, twenty twenty. Like he helped me with my truck and helped me, bro. I didn't know how to change a tire, dog. Straight up, embarrassing as hell. I didn't know how to change a tire, bro. And he helped me change this part. He explained to me, "Hey, man, your car is like a puzzle. If you take out a left part, it's got to, like, the trim pieces, it's got to go on the left. The left can't go on the right. And yeah. he just started, like, like kind of holding my hand, holding my hand, man. But he was, like, making me a better person. And I remember one time he was like, hey, bro, you're going to change your tires. And I'm like, what? Like, I'm going to stand right here by you. I'm going I'm to verbally tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. But you're going to do it all by yourself. And I'm like, I'm hella nervous. I'm like, fuck, what? Like, And now, bro, I do everything by myself yep. and i'm like shout out and brother bro yeah like like holidays birthdays special events we're we're, we're linking up yeah, man because that's a real one and and i've known homies for 10 plus years and they're still around but him he here he up there too yeah. real one. shout out shout out shout out to the real ones out the there one, the real ones from a short period of time yeah. but you get that brother relationship building with them bro solid ones i'm just practicing questions here that i Not thought good. like would be interesting for my guest yeah What's one small act of kindness that you'll never forget? That, like, I've done personally? That's been done for you. <sighs> Let me see. Man. Damn. That's really something to think about. I'm pretty sure you've been blessed here or there. By oh, some, man. A stranger, a close friend, somebody you wouldn't even think. Got the tab. Man, uh, back to my Arab homie, bro. Like, my account was, uh, it was, like, on negative. Uh-huh. And all I had it was, like, Apple Pay. I'm like, bro, like, just send me 50 bucks real quick. I'll send it back whenever I get it. Just so I can pay for this real quick. And without, like, a question, just sent it. And it's just, like, even, like, not even money-wise, but just... I don't know, bro, when people treat you like family. Mm-hmm. Like, I've gone to his house plenty of times. Like, after the gym, I'm all sweaty. He's like, here, bro, take some shorts, some shirt, towel, go shower real quick. And it's like, bro, like, it's like another home. Yeah. 
and coming down, like, I'm like, I already got to visit him and his mom. His mom's like another mom to me. And I don't know, man. It's just can't think of like one thing in particular, but that's enough, though. Yeah, that, that, that coming through because a lot of people were like, for what? Yeah. Or the when are you going to pay me? Yeah. Like, like or bugging all, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And him, bro, like, he's been one of those, like, you can pay me back whenever, like, two years, ten years. Like, I don't care, bro. Like, cause I just want to make sure you're It's straight. more about the money. Yeah. It's about just helping out my helping brother. Helping out, like, yep. whatever struggle he's going through real quick, like, I will help him. And then same thing, like, if he needed something, without a question, bro, like, even if I'm 300 miles away, like, if he needed money, send it. If you need something done for you, like, if a part is over here and you want me to ship it to you, I'll go grab it, ship it, stuff like that, but... Man, I can't pick like one solid, you know, thing. But no, but that's life, man. And yeah. I feel like that's the beauty of it. Like those acts of kindness, those moments, memories. Like, cause once 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 we finally leave this earth, all that's left are the moments and memories. Yeah. And if we could create it in real time and live in the moment, man, I feel like this is like what life's about. It's mm-hmm. like create creating your own legacy and and like like leaving your mark. Exactly. Hey, my brother. Well, on that note, dog, like, thank you for being here once again, bro. Yeah, thanks I, for having me. I really appreciate your time, dog. Yeah, I appreciate this too. And like, this was really dope. And um, hey, everybody, tap in. You guys need signs. You guys need pictures. Anything. You, real estate. This is your guy. Do it all. Ten gen visuals coming to a, a city near you. Yes, sir. I'm 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 not local. I'm global. Sheesh. <laughs> all right, bro. Peace. Yes, sir.